Imagine you're a student pilot, finally getting able to complete that long solo cross country. You've spent hours, days, even planning and preparing for this huge piece of your aviation journey. You made your first leg of the trip and even stopped for a bite to eat. And so now it's time to complete some towered landings and return home. So you're en route to your home airport and suddenly you're faced with one of your biggest fears, a thunderstorm directly over your destination. What do you do? Today, I'm sharing with you how I wound up in that exact situation, why it happened, and how you can make smarter decisions than student pilot Erica. And stick around to the end, you'll learn some valuable lessons that could save your life. So we've all been there, wanting to make confident and safe decisions as a pilot, but there are some things that can limit our ability to do that. Things like fatigue, lack of complete knowledge, and an over-reliance on others, trusting people outside of ourselves, can cloud our judgment. Trust me, I've been there. This story is a powerful reminder of how things can go wrong and how we as pilots can mitigate those issues and not make the same mistake. It was August in central Kentucky, a hot summer day, and finally the day of my long solo cross country. And this is a day every student pilot looks forward to. You finally get to prove that you have what it takes to be a real pilot, to go somewhere and come back. I had meticulously planned my route from central Kentucky regional to Bowling Green, to Lexington to complete my three solo towered landings and then back home. Hours went into planning every detail. Traffic pattern entry and exit depending on the winds, communication and weather frequencies, visual waypoints, and all without the aid of an electronic flight bag. I'm sure you know the feeling. It's nerve wracking and exciting all at the same time. While wrapping up all of the pieces and the final details for my flight, it looked like there would be no issue for this flight. As long as I got home, in the early afternoon. The flight couldn't have started any better. I took off in the morning into calm winds and a clear, beautiful blue sky. There was an uneventful trip to Bowling Green where I grabbed a crew car and a bite to eat. Unfortunately, there was some really bad traffic in the area due to construction and the service at the restaurant was really slow despite it being a fast food chain. When I got back to the Bowling Green airport, I ordered a top off of fuel and headed on my way. Now this next leg was the one I was most nervous about. And that was the solo landings to a full stop at a towered airport. It just so happened that the closest airport with a tower to home was a Class Charlie, Bluegrass Airport or the Lexington Airport. By the time I reached Lexington to complete the second leg of my three leg journey, I was starting to get tired. Fortunately, these solo towered landings went off without a hitch and then I was ready to return home and go and tell all of my friends and family about the incredible trip that I had. The weather was typical for Southeast United States in the summertime. There were some little towering cumulus starting to pop up here and there. Very easy to maintain VFR along the route of flight home. Now, when I took off that morning, there were blue skies, but as happens in the Southeast United States in the summertime, the weather had begun to change. It was still VFR and there were still blue skies in most of the area, but we were starting to get the development of some cumulus clouds, some gaining some vertical height as well. So weather was VFR with some tall puffy clouds starting to form. The last leg of this trip from Lexington to Central Kentucky Regional is less than 30 miles. Should be a short, quick flight, no problem at all. As the Lexington departure began to transfer me over to the common traffic advisory frequency, or CTAF, they did have an advisory they gave me. The Lexington departure controller advised me of an area of light to moderate precipitation just east of my destination airport. Fortunately, I was in an airplane that had an MFD, a multifunction display that showed NEXRAD weather information. So I checked my MFD. It only showed light precipitation, so I thought, no problem, I'll just continue on. 
What I didn't realize at the time was that this next rad information can be 15 minutes old or older. That lack of knowledge nearly cost me. Still thinking nothing was amiss, I kept flying directly to Central Kentucky Regional. I started to enter the downwind and I saw a flash of lightning directly above the FBO. My heart stopped. I immediately rolled into a 360 degree turn to collect myself and try and buy some time to figure out what I was going to do. My brain was spinning and as I'm processing all of the information that I have, I hear a pilot say that they're turning on final over the CTAF. I think, well, great, I'll just ask them what's going on. So I asked the traffic on final how the weather was and their reply, it's not bad, but I wouldn't extend your downwind. In that moment, I let the pilot in the other airplane and his opinion of the environment override my instincts. I chose to continue with the approach and land, even though everything in me was screaming that it was a bad idea. I was so scared and rushed on this approach to landing, I didn't pay attention to airspeed or configuration. Winds were bouncing me all over the place and there was heavy precipitation as I was coming in on final. My only focus was getting the airplane on the ground. And only after the wheels touched down did I realize how reckless that was. I taxied off the runway, cleaned up the configuration or whatever configuration there was, made a call that I was clear of the runway and looked onto the ramp to see a group of people standing there watching like a NASCAR race. That was when it really hit me, how close I was to making a catastrophic mistake. There is no other time in my life that there were a group of people watching me land. I was lucky, but luck is not a strategy we can rely on. I taxied by all of the people who came out to watch me land, and practically before the propeller stopped spinning after I cut the mixture, my instructor popped his head in and said, you go inside, I'll take care of the aircraft. Here's what I learned in reflecting on that flight. Number one, fatigue can cloud your judgment. This was the longest flight that I had taken up to this point, with several stops and a lot of decisions to make along the way. I didn't have an electronic flight bag with me to help reduce workload. I just had to rely on my paper map and the VFR navigation log that I had filled out. So not only was I physically fatigued from flying for those three and a half hours, I was also mentally really fatigued. This fatigue reduces our ability to focus and make solid decisions. It slows down and impairs our cognitive ability and reduces the speed and ability to take in information and use that to make good decisions. The second thing I learned after the fact is that onboard weather systems have big limitations. In most light piston aircraft, our onboard weather systems can have really big delays in the information. Sometimes it can be just a minute or two, but others it can take up to 15 minutes for that information to be received and sent to our system. Which means that we should only use this information like NEXRAD and Sirius and ADSB in the weather reporting information, as an aid to our situational awareness, not as our primary source of information for making decisions. The last thing that I learned upon reflecting is that the only person in your airplane who can act as pilot in command is you. Getting pie reps is important. Understanding the conditions as they exist and getting up-to-date information from another pilot in the airspace is massively important for aiding our situational awareness. But if you ever get the heebie-jeebies, if your instincts and your guts are yelling at you, make a decision that will err on the side of safety and caution. What I should have done in that instance is divert to an airport like Danville, wait for that little isolated storm to move out, and then come back in when things cleared up. Or better yet, given that I was fatigued, grab an Uber or a ride back home. Overall, this experience as a whole, when I reflect on it, now that I'm several years removed from it, the big takeaways are that you should never skimp on weather planning. You need to fully understand the systems that you have available to you and their limitations. You need to be mindful of fatigue and your own personal minimums in terms of how long are you willing to fly in one single day. And don't ever let anyone else make the decisions that only you are responsible for as pilot in command. Every single flight we take is a learning opportunity. 
as pilots, we should always be learning, which is part of the reason why it's important to share our mistakes. If you want to feel more confident in your own weather briefing and decision making, you can check out this weather brief checklist for free from gilbertaviation.com. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. Leave a comment below about your thoughts. What do you think about this story? Also, let me know, do you have a story while you were flying about a time you had to make a split second decision? How did that turn out for you? When you reflect on that situation now, what are some takeaways or learning points that have stuck with you? I'd love to hear your stories.